we're at the two big announcements part. Uh, thank you for <laughs> sticking around. I know we we wanted to hold out to the end, uh, but Tom, we'll let you talk about speaking of uh, what's coming. Well, we'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you to all the presenters and all the amazing startups that we saw today and projects. It's really inspiring to see them. Thank you to you, Amy and David, for being our awesome hosts and keeping everything perfectly on time. I'm really amazed at your organizational skills. And thank you to the core team and everyone who's contributed to Redwood along the way. All of you are involved in in this moment in time uh, and the success of these startups and projects. And I think that's really meaningful to be a part of creating tools that help other people build faster and better. So let's talk about some announcements. All right. So announcement number one is about the future of Redwood and where we're going. So we've decided that our major versions get rolled pretty frequently. We're on version five right now. Six is coming very soon. And um, we talk about epochs as being our kind of major delineation between the sort of phases of Redwood. So we've so far, and we don't talk about it that much, but so far we've been in the first epoch, which we call Arapaho, named after the Arapaho National Forest. We name our epochs after national forests because Redwood. Um, and now we are ready to launch into the next epoch of Redwood. And so what we've been working on a lot is talking about how to solve the problem of server-side rendering. It's something that Redwood does not do very well right now. It's something that a lot of people need. And so this put us down the path of evaluating how we want to implement that. And we've been working on this for quite a while and experimenting with different technologies. And we've looked at lots of different ways to solve this. But after a long evaluation period, we have decided that the future of Redwood is going to be React server components. We are going to go all in 100% on the React server component pattern, and that will be the defining feature of the next epoch, which I have decided will be called Bighorn, named after the Bighorn National Forest. So Bighorn, A, was Arapaho, B is, is Bighorn. We have many letters left, so it's the beginning of the journey. So React server components. All right, well, how did we get there? That's still a... Like, is that even a thing? The React team seems to think it's a thing. Um, you don't see very many implementations of this out in the wild yet. And we think that that's an opportunity for us to come in at the beginning of its history and really help define what that means and become a first-class citizen in the React Server Components world. So what are the features, what are the advantages of React Server Components? We think there are many of them. First of all, SSR in general, but React Server Components in specific make certain things easier. Things like SEO. You need to be able to deliver static HTML to the browser so that search engines and other types of indexers can pick up that HTML in the best and fastest way possible uh, and use that to show your site to people who are searching for it. So SEO, that's an obvious one, why you want to be able to deliver static HTML on your first page load. Along with that come things like OG tags, the open graph tags that allow your site to be unfurled on things like Twitter or Facebook or Slack or wherever so that they can pull down that metadata and show a custom image, custom information about your site so that it looks pretty uh, in places like Twitter. That also requires delivering static HTML and those meta tags to, uh, to clients that, are, that want to pull it. Um, on top of that, we get into things like data fetching and how do you interact with from your front end to your back end. Um, and so far, Redwood JS has been all about GraphQL. And GraphQL is the way that you have a statically delivered React front end, a single page application, SPA, that talks GraphQL to a GraphQL API back end that we make really easy and first class uh, to use. And that's what Redwood JS has been based on. I think that that can pose significant challenges during early prototyping phases of your application. We've heard this from people, we've experienced it ourselves. So we'd like to use React Server Components as an optional way to have a more transparent API that you might use during prototyping so that you can very quickly be fetching data from your backend, from your database. And we'll still have, of course, Prisma is still involved and still all baked in. Uh, but that can be a way that you can hopefully move faster. You don't have to use, in this new epoch of Redwood JS, the intention is that you don't have to use 
GraphQL, but when you're ready for it, when you want to add something like a mobile client or another type of a client, or maybe you want to use it from the beginning, that's fine, but you can add it later on to fit your needs. And I think there will be a really beautiful pattern where you start with React Server Components, just fetching data directly from your database. Uh, and then later on, you add a mobile client and you start implementing a GraphQL API because that's really great for your mobile client or other types of clients. And then make it easy for you to then consume that GraphQL API also in your React Server Components because there's no reason that you couldn't. And if you have a GraphQL API, it's very easy to consume. It's much more difficult to create your GraphQL API, but once you have it, very easy to consume. So I think there's cool patterns that we'll create there. Another factor is around performance. We have the ability and have always had the ability to deploy to serverless environments, things like Netlify and Vercel. But we find that performance can be really challenging to get there because of things like cold starts, trying to get an entire Redwood, Redwood JS code base into a Lambda function is quite challenging. There's restrictions there. Um, how long that function can run for. There are certain restrictions that you run into using things like Lambda. And so most of the people that use Redwood JS end up using a server full deployment platform already uh, because of performance reasons and, and just the limitations. So we want to really put the Jamstack sort of optimization behind us. That's where we started because that was kind of the, the initial reason for Redwood to, to exist was to kind of see if we could build a framework that you could deploy on things like Netlify. Uh, in reality, for this type of dynamic applications that people are building with Redwood that we really are, are optimizing for, we're already serverful for the most part. Let's double down on that. React Server Components are a great fit for that. And that will be where we focus. We will attempt to make all of this stuff work on serverless platforms, but some things probably won't, or they won't work quite as well. So the future is primarily serverful for us. Uh, it's also pulling in third-party data from sites like Shopify uh, or Contentful is a little weird because with Redwood JS, you currently have to go through a GraphQL API. So you, you from your front end, call a GraphQL API. Now on your back end API, now you're calling something like Shopify or Contentful, and you're kind of shuttling it through GraphQL, which seems kind of heavyweight. And with React Server Components, it will feel much more transparent. You can just do your third-party fetch directly from your React Server component, uh, and you're done. You'll still be able to do it from the client components in the same way that you do right now with GraphQL, and we'll make that easy as well so that there's first-class sort of on-demand data fetching from the client.